Good day, CFAS. I'm here to commemorate the Battle of Midway and celebrate our naval heritage. As professionals, we often articulate the rewards of military service in terms of pay, benefits, and perhaps mission, often undervaluing or ignoring until much later in life the less tangible attributes like camaraderie, pride in uniform, and place in history. There is a lesson to be learned by our colleagues in the Marine Corps. Celebrating our traditions, patriotic duty, and heritage while on active duty is good business, and it directly enhances recruiting, retention, and reinforces our core values. One of the most enduring themes of military service is the sense that through our service, we are part of something greater than ourselves. That we are part of a continuum of service, somehow tied directly to one another and to those who have come before us. This week, we commemorate the 71st anniversary of the Battle of Midway. The battle, which took place June 4th to 7th, 1942, changed the course of the war in the Pacific and highlighted naval aviation's vast capabilities. What was it about the Battle of Midway that's important enough to talk about today, and why are people still surprised, 71 years later, that the U.S. Navy was victorious? The Battle of Midway, which was fought over and near the tiny U.S. Mid-Pacific base at Midway Atoll, represented the strategic high-water mark of Japan's Pacific Ocean War. Prior to the battle, Japan possessed general naval superiority over the United States and could usually choose where and when to attack. The Battle of Midway shifted the naval power dynamic of World War II. After Midway, the two opposing fleets were essentially equals, and that shift enabled the United States to take the offensive. The battle began when Japanese naval forces moved on the base in an effort to draw out and destroy the U.S. Pacific Fleet's aircraft carrier striking forces, which had embarrassed the Japanese Navy in mid-April during the Doolittle Raid on Japan's home islands and then again at the Battle of Coral Sea in early May. Japan's Navy planned to quickly knock down Midway's defenses, follow up with an invasion of Midway's two small islands, and establish a Japanese air base there. Their plan was for the U.S. carriers to arrive at Midway too late to save the island and for Japan Japanese forces to have sweeping victory over U.S. naval forces proved insufficient compared to well-tested strength of their carrier air power. How did the U.S. Navy seize the victory and shift the naval power dynamics? The easy answer is superior intelligence. American communications intelligence deduced Japan's plan well before battle began and allowed Admiral Chester Nimitz, U.S. Pacific Fleet Commander at the time, to establish an ambush with Navy carriers ready and waiting for the Japanese. On June 4, 1942, the trap, the Second Pacific War's great carrier battles, was sprung. U.S. Naval aviators' perseverance, sacrifice and skill, and great deal of good luck on the American side cost Japan four irreplaceable fleet carriers. Only one of the three U.S. carriers present was lost. Although the base at Midway was damaged by Japan's air attack, the base remained operational and later became a vital component in the American Trans-Pacific Offensive. Why is Midway still remembered as one of the most important World War II battles? According to Winston Churchill, this memorable American victory was of cardinal importance, not only to the United States, but to the whole Allied cause. At one stroke, the dominant position of Japan in the Pacific was reversed. It's important that we take time to celebrate and communicate these traditions to our sailors. Many of these young professionals want to have the importance of their service reinforced to understand their place in history. 